And so as I begin this morning, um, almost afternoon now, so I feel air. And again, that spaciousness is so much about breath. There's so much about breath and space and air. And so um, this message is about a new song, singing a new song, singing and dancing and moving a new song of praise. So our text says, sing to the beloved a new song. And um, as I worked on this text, in particular in the last week, uh, so much moved and I kept saying, well, it's changed again. And um, I've said in the last 24 hours, I'll figure out why it changed. And this is why it changed. Um, and so um, spirit, is, a spirit is mystical and uh, spirit is a blessing. Uh, so th this is that. Uh, not disconnected at all, I want to start um, by saying uh, that I don't want to miss um, on this walk, move for the cure for breast cancer that I feel so blessed and amazed and am in wonder that I am standing here. I'm a survivor of breast cancer. Um, <laughs> Uh, this is 10 years for me, and um, it has, I've had a couple of scares where I thought reoccurrence had happened, and I, and I want to do the ad. I want to do the ad that says get checked, uh, because I am a person who had, had I not gotten checked 10 years ago, I would not be standing here. I promise you. And literally, um, that, is, that is truly a blessing. Had I turned the opposite direction, rather than gone to get checked on a particular day, in a particular moment, I would not be in this realm anymore. And so I really want to say out loud in as many places as I can um, how important it is to take that seriously um, and, and overcome all the things that go with it because there's so many things about what it means to go ahead and get checked. And um, I am one of those people that is proof of how important it is. Uh, and I feel very blessed um, to be standing here. Um, so I want to share that. <laughs> so again, not unconnected. Uh, this is about a new song, <clears throat> singing a new song, dancing and movement and instrumentals and songs of praise. And, I, and what came for me around this also is the question, do you, do we, do I want new songs? New dance, new movement, because to sing and dance and move and play and praise means we have to encounter those. Uh, we have to experience them. And do we want that? Do we want those new songs? And that was one of the things that really came up for me. So I want to put that out there and invite you to let that go through. Is that something that we want? Um, and how that, how that lands for you. So do we want those new songs? So I'm going to speak about, the text says, sing a new song. And songs is plural, because I think this is about more than one song, even though it may be one song repeatedly. And I also want to talk about this in an individual way and also in a corporate or community way. What we've done here today, so far, um, and thank you, Minister Deidre, I don't know where, uh, she has this way of popping in and, you know, and there she is. And I want it, but it's an opportunity to say thank you so much and I'll do this again. And Daniel as well, Minister Daniel, and what it means to have corporate worship that is musical and all of our musical groups and the, the drama and all of the groups that are together in dance um, that um, contribute to this on a regular basis in our community and what it means to have those 
groups and those, the participation uh, that makes that happen. And it's individual and it's community. So um, that's the way I'll be thinking and talking about this. So our theme for these five weeks has been living grace. And grace has been talked about in a number of ways. Um, so saving grace and companion, companioning grace and fierce grace, talked about beholding grace and grace as sustaining. And I want to add today that grace offers encouragement. And today I want to talk about how it opens us to create and share and access new songs and dance and movement and vibrations of praise and that it helps us open to those in the midst of the greatest struggles in our lives as well as the most joyous and celebratory times of our lives. And that these songs and movements and dance are also very unique. They're unique to us as individuals and they're very much about mind and body and spirit and emotion. And so that is all there as well. And going back to the question of, is this what we want? Do we want those? I want to pose that we already have them. And maybe the question is, do we know where they are? Do we know what they are? Do we, have we accessed them? So one of the ways that I have explored this, um, this text is that um, we have a bird in our yard uh, who visits regularly. And it is through watching this little tiny bird that a number of things have come to me about the text. And so I can say things about uh, Grace uh, sending the bird, sending the encouragement, I could say the encouragement was the bird, but the bird has certainly shown up. So I should give a little background. I'll say I really enjoy birds. I spend a lot of time paying attention to birds. I um, have always been that way. Uh, my mother loved birds. I think that's one of the places that actually came from. Um, I lived out west for many, many years. I only last year around this time moved to this ecosystem. So I'm in a really new place and I don't recognize a lot of the birds I see. So I am constantly trying to pay in here and I'm constantly trying to figure out who I'm encountering with regard to birds. and. Um, I, I also want to say that birds are actually very much a part of my stress reduction and some of the things about wellness. Reverend Dwayne's uh, sermon last week had actually some parts in it that were very much about wellness and we're moving into a series next week that is about wellness and thinking about how wellness um, comes up in our spiritual lives as well as thinking about our lives, mind, body, body spirit, and emotion. And so birds are part of that. So Reverend Kathy will tell you that I, spent, I have spent, uh, in particular since spring when birds got pretty loud in the way that birds do in the spring, uh, saying, so what is that bird that I just heard? And is that the same song that we heard before? Or is that a different song? And what are the markings on that bird? And do you know what that bird was? And all of those kind of questions. And so this particular little bird, and I mean little bird. This is a little bird by my standards. Again, I've been in the Rocky Mountain West and birds are generally pretty large by comparison in some ways. So this very little bird uh, sat on a housetop, uh, uh, the house just across from ours, and threw its head back and sang this amazing song and sang it loudly enough that, that literally things were vibrating. And I said, where is that coming from? And Reverend Kathy said, it's that bird on the, on the rooftop. And I said, that bird can possibly be making that song. And it turned out that that was that bird. That bird has shown up many, many times. And now that it is fall, the bird is quieter, but the bird is present. And so I'm watching its movements. It's very graceful, actually. So. Um, this bird has caused me to think a lot about song 
And here comes the scripture about singing a new song. So sometimes spirit is ha-ha funny as well as funny in other ways. So this bird is present and I'm thinking about that and actually having some pretty um, important, uh, impactful thoughts. And so the things that are coming up for me as I paid attention to this bird were, was it easy or more difficult particular days for this bird to do this amazing song? And was I listening to new song every day? And what is this bird song in community? What is, what is going on for this bird? And I found that I was thinking the same thing about human song and movement and engagement. And as I thought of this time with you, I thought about these things that I want to just share for a few minutes and I want to give credit to the bird and there is a desire to call because giving credit is important. <laughs> giving credit is important. There's a whole movement about giving black women credit and in this body, let me tell you, giving credit is important. So I'm giving the bird credit. I, I would name the bird Grace but I don't know the bird well enough so I'm not naming the bird. Okay. So, and I'm giving the bird credit. What came up for me were these three things. That it can be wonderful sometimes and really tough other times to find praise in song and in movement and dance. And I wondered from being with this bird, why does this text say sing a new song? new movements and songs and dance. Why new? And how might that be healing for us? And the third thing I wondered about again is why new song in community rather than only alone? So the first thing, how can it be wonderful and how might it be difficult? to sing and move and dance praise. So our scripture says, first of all on the wonderful part, our scripture says, singing to the beloved a new song. It speaks of singing to the beloved a new song, praising with dancing and movement and instruments. And then it says, be glad in the creator, rejoice in love divine. How wonderful can it be to be singing and dancing and moving and praising love divine. So I want, I want to encourage you to think about songs of praise and movement and praise in the, to the creator that arise body, spirit, mind, and emotion and how that arises for you. And I want to encourage you to think in particular about where does it show up in your body? Where does that, where do you notice praise showing up in your body. We just had this amazing experience here, at least, let me, let me name it for me, amazing experience. So, so just to wonder, just maybe to know, where does that show up in your body? This relationship that we have with our own bodies. So there's a thing that came up for me. Where does it show up? Also, I invite for you to notice and think about places and locations where songs and movements and dance of praise arise in your life. Because we, on each Sunday and in programming throughout the week, worship in a hybrid way. So some of us are in this room at 474 Ridge Street Northwest, and others of us are in the woods, on beaches, in kitchens, in restrooms, on street corners, in cars, and I could keep going. And I will invite you to think about where you have been in a state of praise during our services. And for folks online, where are you now in a state of praise? And so to think about where what are the locations where this has happened? Because we are in community and we're having individual experiences, but we are praising in community. So where? And 
what has been happening simultaneously? What has happened at the same time? I'm aware that in this space, I'm here, and Minister Deidre is nearby. These candles are here. The altar is physically present for me, this altar. I have an altar at home when I worship from home virtually. Um, I'm, we are, things are happening in this room between us. Other things are happening when people are here virtually. Are you looking at a sunset? Are you with some birds? Here, birds fly by a lot. Are, are you in the arms of your love or recalling feelings of being in the arms of your love? And the thing that we may all have in common is the feeling and the sensation and the knowing God's love for each of us. Wherever we are, no matter who we are, that that just is. So that's the wonderful part, perhaps. For me, that's the wonderful part. And then there's the part that can be um, more difficult. And there's the part that can be more tough. So having songs of praise and movement and praise arise um, in more difficult times um, is another thing. Um, as the things that move through the society, the things that are being said, the things that um, are being thrown about, that are about violence and exclusion and all the things that are happening that are there to certainly be sure that folks who are already pushed to the margins are sure that they should be at the margins and don't belong. And, of course, they, we, do belong and have a right to being included, to being welcomed, have a right to gender affirming care, have a right to be present. And so those things are going on as well. And so when those things are going on, how do we sing? How do we move? How do we dance in praise? And so I want to give you a moment to think about that. Um, we had the song sung about not giving up. And so Reverend Dwayne mentioned last week in talking about grace, and I would say the same thing about praise and grace. This is not about everything being okay, but it is about knowing that we're not alone. So I am certain that the myth of oppression or inequitable social power is that we're alone at the margins. We are supposed to believe that we're all alone. And in fact, that is a marker of being harmed, that we are all alone. And actually, as God informed Elijah of the 7,000 worshipers of God in Israel in 1 Kings, when Elijah thought, there's nobody else out here but me, and God said, whoa, there's 7,000 people out there who also are worshipers, that those at the margins also have others at the margins as well as those in solidarity and allies who are also present. And it is so easy to forget that. In fact, those who are marginalized are supposed to forget that. And so it is so important uh, to pay attention to that as we again think about, so how do I praise? How do I find a song? How do I find a song of praise? So we can sing and move and play that song of praise that says, I'm not alone. That we have others in this realm and we have God. And that is grace. And so I just want to invite you to take a moment and think of the God of your understanding and maybe you put your hand on your chest or maybe you're just aware of your heart or something that allows you to go inward and pay attention to the idea. Entertain the notion that God is present with you in all of this, all the time. Just for a moment. I think this 
is something else that we are supposed to be overrun with messages to have us not take time to notice and do. Because this is about caring for ourselves and each other as well. I forget to do this. So it's important to say that new songs of praise and being tired of injustice and having gratitude for not being alone has become movements of speaking about and resisting injustice. About, and it's become about speaking and speaking and speaking about these things and marching for justice and writing and voting and doing these things because systemic, justice, systemic injustice has to be named and named and named and named and not allowed to be hidden in the shadows. And that's just not me saying that and just not anybody saying that. Our text from this Psalm 149 says this. For the beloved dwells within, journeying with us through all of our lives. So again, we're not alone. He goes on to say, leading us in truth and love. The outcasts are adorned with honor. The chains of oppression are broken. The fetters of injustice unbound. So there can be comfort and rest in this awareness and therefore resistance. So a couple of other things. The second point this little bird brought to me, brought to mind for me, is this business of a new song and why a new song. And so one could entertain the notion that perhaps it's because the events and experiences of our hurts and traumas are actually in our songs and in our dance and movement and in our praise and worship and our experiences of our greatest joys and our most exhilarating days are also in our songs and in our dance and in our movement and in our worship. So these older songs may help us know that the kind of this kind of support that we might need that, be be, that may be best for us at particular times. So these songs, these movements, these dances of praise might help us know who support us in understanding our experiences body, mind, and spirit. There are times when songs help us know that seeing a counselor or a therapist can be important and helpful. So when I, after my son passed, and I'd gone for a period of time, and I thought, you know, I've done a lot of work on this, and I'm good. It was sitting in church that made me know that I actually needed to go back and do some more work on my grief. So there's an example. Someone who can help us work with our experiences of trauma, getting to our stories in ways that do not deepen the hurt for ourselves or others, but ways that are healing. Somebody who will help us know how to find words and movement or drawing or songs for our stories and our hurts. So songs of praise also help us notice joy and uplift, not just grief and sadness, but that as well, and those who care for us sometimes help us notice that part moving in us as well as the other as we are in praise, whether individually or in community settings. So, thing I want to speak to for just a minute is why in community? So new songs in community, in new songs in community, we can find experiences and understandings about the creator in shared praise. In hearing, in receiving, in feeling, and seeing others' movements and dancing and songs, we can actually find out more about other struggles, pray with them, pray for them, and also find out some things about how, again, we aren't alone, and what it is our needs may be and their needs may be. 
we can actually engage also in what sometimes is called the ministry of presence, being with others in what they are experiencing. To actually be in the ministry of presence and in the ministry of justice. And those things really overlap a lot, both in the community and within MCCDC and beyond. And those things can happen, again, as we are in um, corporate or in community uh, praise. So a task that we can choose to take on is to feel and to be in that connection in our hybrid context. And I think this is, is, um, is it can be a challenge or certainly is something for us to think about at this point. What does it mean to feel and praise and move and actively bi-directionally engage virtually? To, to let folks know that we're here when we're here virtually. To, uh, to engage here, in the, here when we're here in the building and when we're elsewhere. To think about and be in community from both directions. So let us stay in and deepen our connections, attending services and engaging in other programs and ministries. And to think about that and be in relationship with that as praise. How do we do that as praise is a thing to think about. And as we think about programming, we're talking Bible study and generosity team and pastoral care and wellness programming upcoming and music and dance and drama and um, AV and sound and live stream. Things that go on synchronously at the same time and things that go on on demand. So all these things that I've been talking about are ways that we can say yes to grace. Yes to grace that invites us to open to new songs and dance and movement in praise. To say yes to praise. Praise in felt and shared community. So this is community that can be of service and support to communities beyond the physical and virtual walls of MCCDC. And perhaps this is our MCCDC community new song of praise that has to be sung over and over and over again and danced and moved over and over and over again. And this is where a new song is not a single thing. A new song becomes a new song as it gets done over and over and over again. A song of praise, of gratitude for getting this far, and a prayer for strength to be dis uh, to strength and focus and courage to continue to be transformed and to transform the world within the walls and beyond this church for peace and love and justice. The walls physically and the walls virtually. So what are your new songs, your new dance, your new movement to the God of your understanding? So I'd encourage you to spend time with that as you would. And do you want your new song? You may find that it's already there. And I wish you blessings as you Go looking forward and encounter it. Ashe, may it be so. Amen. <laughs>